Scoot Henderson is one of the best prospects that I've ever seen. Um, he, you know, is probably the best point guard prospect um, I've ever seen, aside from maybe like Chris Paul. Um, the like elite small PG archetype is a rare one. Um, there just aren't a lot of these guys because of how you know important size and, and strength and, and length is in the league. Um, but the ones that are good tend to be really, really good. Um, and we're going to get into those guys um, along with Scoot today and what makes him a potential number one pick candidate um, next year in 2023. Yeah, I said it. Um, he is an SSS plus tier athlete. One of, if not, you know, one of one of one of the two best guard athletes I've, I've ever seen, and one of the you know best basketball athletes I've ever seen. It's not just the intense burst, but the ability to stop and start on a dime, and then you know rise up quickly and explosively in traffic off of one foot. Uh, the initial burst separate is obvious. Then the ability to change directions, change speeds, and dunk. He makes this look so effortless, like Scoot going from you know, zero to a hundred, back to zero to load up for this like pretty unbelievable reverse dunk where like in this spot, it does not look like a dunk is really possible. Um, but Scoot is able to get up so high um, and get up quickly and smoothly to be able to dunk that home. This is like the ability to, to combine his like, you know, his enough handle for these little, little quick crosses and change of direction moments with his crazy burst and, you know, vertical explosion. He's pretty unchallengeable at the rim at this point, um, which is crazy considering he's only he was only 17 in a lot of these games. And off the ball as well, um, you know, his speed on these, like, little blind pig drop-off actions, there's just no stopping him. It's not just the, you know, this, this on-ball defender who's just going to get torched, like, even though he's reacting kind of early. Um, but it's this help defender who... He's reacting to this play before the ball is like fully in Scoot's control, but despite having you know, a, you know, like a five foot distance uh, advantage distance right here to the rim, he just has absolutely no chance to to catch Scoot. And you know, there there really aren't too many you know point guard athletes who compare uh, to Scoot Henderson. Like John Wall is is one with just you know unparalleled speed um, for his you know for his level of strength and. And general explosion um, at that point, like he was again like Scoot, a guy who was just impossible to stop from from getting into the lane whenever he want against you know a standstill defense uh, again on like a dribble handoff like that, or if you know he's gonna get back door um, like we saw from Scoot as well. But um, like Wall was was really unbelievable, but I think Scoot was a better athlete. Um, the only one I think is really probably better was Rose who was that same unbelievable level of standstill burst. Um, the stop-start was probably even more explosive. Um, that is, <laughs> I don't know, just like an uh, unbelievable um, explosion and shiftiness. Uh, this this next play is, is really Scoot-like to me um, with just the way that he's able to effortlessly go from 0 to 100 uh, to 0 to, to you know make his way into the paint. Uh, slice through an entire defense with a couple little change of pace moves um, and just make it look so, so easy. And then even more recently, like someone like, there's Jaw as well, who I you know didn't have a clip of, and Jaden Ivey, who's a bit bigger, but had that same like game-breaking half-court dunk um, level athleticism where the, the burst and the explosion was just so, so special. Uh, but Scoot is really, um, is really elite. Like the, the burst... The, the first step, the, the last steps, um, his ability to, to change to change speeds and directions, uh, his ability to rise quickly and explosively, it's, it, it's, it's unreal. Like, obviously, like, athletic tools matter a ton, and when they're this good, um, that is, you know, the making, you have the makings of, of a real star prospect. But unlike a lot of these, you know, not just the guys we talked about, but a lot of, you know, young point guards, especially ones with his level of tools, um, Scoot is really polished. There's certainly a lot of rawness to his game, but it's also just a level of refinement to um, a lot of his approach, especially as a scorer, where he's comfortable doing stuff like taking small guards into the post and, and hitting fadeaways. And this play I love where Scoot, you know, kind of snakes this defender um, and gets back to the middle. And then when he sees he's not going to have, you know, an easy time finishing through this guy, he's able to decelerate. Um, and finish softly off the glass. That deceleration is so critical for speedy guys, because um, you know if, if a guy like Scoot, who 
almost no one's going to be able to stay in front of can master being able to quickly stop his momentum and create space for a jumper that way or a little floater that way. Uh, it's going to be deadly. And, you know, that stuff he's already showcasing um, in the G League at 17 years old. And just like the craft on, uh, you know, being able to use his crazy athletic tools, uh, the shiftiness, um, it's like, like, like this footwork is awesome. Um, like the quick kind of plant right but pick up left uh, to fool that defender and create space. It was really impressive. And he was definitely more advanced at this than a guy like Wall, who oftentimes like struggled to create um, you know, good shots for himself off the dribble more than he should have for someone of his level of tools, where he, you know, settle for like tough little floater pull-ups where he didn't necessarily need to. Um, and definitely ahead of someone like Westbrook, who honestly I don't think that was that great of a prospect, but was pretty routinely getting himself stuck um, in complicated on-ball situations like this, um, where I think someone like Scoot exhibits more patience and willingness to, you know, make simple plays and execute simple counters, like, you know, and crossovers towards the middle uh, and stuff like that. Um, Scoot, um, the only real, like, athletic nitpick I can, I can say about Scoot at this point is, like, his strength, which is not bad at all, but certainly he's a little wiry, combined with his Lack of two-foot contact athleticism can create some issues as a finisher at this point where, you know, a lot of these are very, very tough finishes where if you go off of two and there's, like, contact and size and length, Scoot sometimes struggles to generate a lot of aerial advantage. And while, like, he's very long and kind of stretchy, he can stretch out and contort around defenders a little bit, um, I definitely think there is struggle um, when it comes to absorbing contact in midair. Um, and being able to hold that contact and finish strong. Um, and that's really, like, the big difference between between he and Rose, where Rose is, like, probably the best aerial athlete I've ever seen. Um, someone who was just able to hang in the air for what felt like ages and keep his balance um, and finish shots. Again, like, his feet are facing towards the baseline when he jumps, and they're facing towards the, the sideline when he, when he finishes the play. Like, just unbelievable control. Um, and again, like the burst on display um, here, as well as the ability to hang around defenders um, and just, you know, wait, like just to just wait till the defenders hit the ground, wait till they're out of block range so he can finish. And that's not something I think Scoot is really going to be doing, but that's OK, um, because Scoot with his level of, you know, one foot explosion and that contact work is stuff that can be trained, especially as he continues to work with with NBA level strength training. Um, I think it's going to be really huge for him. So, um, and, and, you know, I, I think stuff with, stuff like that is also going to help with, you know, plays like this where he can get kind of stuck um, and, you know, forced into bad shots where, like, he has, um, you know, some processing issues. And I think this decision-making is, you know, one of my big, uh, like, my big developmental questions uh, with Scoot. Like, how can he continue to, you know, make the right decision on the ball and continue to develop his counters where, like, if a defender can slide with him and there's, like, help in the paint and, like, he can get kind of stuck because he just doesn't have the most creative um, counters, I, I don't think he really needs them to be really good just because of his insane first step um, and ability to get separation with the simple counters he has. But, you know, at, at high levels, um, these do become important. And he's very opposite to a guy like Kyrie who, you know, wasn't as bursty, but could you know counter as counter a defender into hell um and just you know continue to string together horizontal moves to get himself downhill whereas you know scoot is, is more of a north south athlete with a little bit of shiftiness um but like point being as we're kind of seeing like these like really really high s tier point guard athletes like it's it, it's a hard archetype to fuck up like the only real fail i can think of um into uh, like like I said, that first big developmental question is, to what extent can Scoot weaponize his scoring and his separation on the ball to improve his passing? And, like, Scoot, I'd say for age, is, is already a good passer. Don't get me wrong. Like, as as is common with many young young bursty guards, he's, he's awesome at, like, hitting little laydowns when he sees help reacting um, and the help slides over, and he's, you know, he's capable of using a live dribble. Uh, to hit those hit those kind of rolling in interior defenders, um, just is very aware of the gravity he has, um, and is is always looking and trying to find these interior passes, which I really appreciate. 
Um, I love you know young players who seek these high value passes, and it's not like he can't play within the offense. Like he can definitely make simple plays like this, where you know he's just getting cut off and he's not turning it over. He's making the right pass one pass away. Uh, again, we see John Wall, uh, who was so blinding and so and so you know pr- prolific getting into the paint, who was someone who hit laydowns like this all the time. Um, and it's something I, I'm sure Scoot will be super reliant on as well in the league. Um, Scoot's big kind of passing issues um, are his outside, his inside outside passing, I think, um, and just his general kind of ability to read the floor, which is something that like most young guards, especially of his, of his age, struggle with. Where again, he's always trying to hit these kind of interior reads, um, which is good, and I think. Having you know those high level layup passes is key, but it doesn't really seem like Scoot is processing the second level a ton. Um, this guy helps pretty hard, and there's nobody uh, connected to to Marge on here, um, so this skip should be pretty easy. But Scoot isn't really making it, and it's not like he never reads. Like there are moments like this where Scoot you know expertly pumps and finds the corner here. This time um, he does fool this help defender, notice and fool him. Uh, with that little pump fake before hitting the corner. Uh, but that is the first, you know, real question I have. Like, to what extent, like, how good can that get? Um, I, like, I, I'm not that worried about, like, Scoot handling an on-ball scoring load just because of his crazy athleticism and, you know, scoring polish at this point. But, you know, if he can handle that decision-making load as well, then he becomes, like, a real championship-level primary initiator, which I, you know, think is, you know, s- somewhat possible with him. Uh, I think I included this clip twice, but... Uh, I didn't mean to do that. The the next the next weakness, which I think is more nuanced than he's gonna get at this point, is the the shooting. Uh, like he shot like under twenty percent from three. It was really not good. But I'm not so worried about it. And when you consider not only was Scoot transitioning from you know the speed of high school AAU ball to to pros, and obviously he is still too fast for the game. He was also transitioning to straight to the NBA three point line. He didn't have the the easing period of like the college line. Um, and there were a lot of rough misses, like, but the shot does look pretty decent to me. Like, I don't see any huge issues um, with the jumper. And there is some ability to to go under, like, when defenses are just daring to, sh- daring to shoot. He's willing to, like, pull, pull those under threes. But what gives me the most optimism, I think, is Scoot's, like, mid-range pull-up stuff where he is really comfortable, like, using his handle to, to get into these shots and being patient and waiting for the right time to, to pull the trigger. Um, and I think this is a good sign because, you know, he is so young and the like the NBA line is a struggle for these guys, especially who aren't like already great, amazing shooters pre, pre-college, pre pre-NBA, pre-G League or whatever. So I think expanding this pull-up uh, out is going to be really, really key. Um, and again, like he can hit these catch-and-shoot jumpers. Um, and I think... Uh, like how good the pull up is is really going to be the the second big question I have, um, because that is going to help determine how effective he can be on ball. Um, and I think even if he gets like prime Westbrook level shooting, like he can be fine, um, just because of how explosive he is and how game breaking that's going to be. The, the the other thing about Scoot is that like his defense is is, is good like for for a seventeen year old like. It's kind of the same thing where, like, as is passing at this point, where, like, the raw instinct takes over, and he's making rotations like that, but, you know, he's, he's kind of unaware, and he could have prevented this cut from even happening, but he still makes an unbelievable block, uh, and his hands are crazy. Like, he is absolutely always um, contesting hard. Um, like, this is, like, a hard early rotation. Like, Scoot, st- Scoot starts moving before Foster's even fully cooked. Um and he contests with great verticality. He's early, like in really impressive stuff. So again, like there are there are flashes of him actually reading and scanning. Um, and as I was trying to say before, the the hands are amazing. Like he has genuinely lightning hands. Um, and as you can kind of see, he he's like not a technical defender at all. I mean, he's 17 playing in like a pro league. I don't really care. But like he like will let guys go by him and just poke and you know find some way to poke the ball up from behind all of the time. And even when he gets beat or stuck on a screen, um, he's able to do this. But plays like this, I like don't see as good reps. Um, even if he is like nabbing, like somehow nabbing crazy pokeouts, like the timing, the quickness is 
unbelievable, but he is just so raw and like doesn't ever close out. Um, and like the on-ball defense is really inconsistent. But again, he's so young, playing like way up for his age, and he's already like making impactful plays, um, despite you know there being a lot of gaffes as well. Um, but yeah, like I, I think Scoot is just kind of foolproof, to be perfectly honest. Um, obviously, it's possible that you know things go wrong, and I'm um, you know it's going to be TBD, obviously to some extent to to how he progresses with this next G League season. Um, you know, if the shot isn't progressing. If the, the playmaking isn't progressing, if the defense isn't progressing, then maybe you get a little worried. But Scoot is the kind of kind of player who you can legitimately build uh, a championship level offense around. Someone who generates effortless paint touches and should be able to capitalize enough uh, with his passing and with his you know intermediate scoring game and with his jump shots um, you know at the highest level when when he ends up fully developing as 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 well as someone who you know doesn't take away value on defense so that's really the holy grail um small guards have to be so good um to to excel in the modern nba and i think scoot uh is the guy who could really be that level uh so yeah i mean it's, i think it's like one of my longer videos but uh, i think it was pretty fun so uh, thanks for watching